welcome to Latitude 46 Publishing's Spring 2022 first book spring launch for any Wenger Nabagons Enough Light for the Next Step. And uh, we're really glad to have uh, friends here in Sudbury and family and friends on live stream. And uh, thanks to um, Points North team for getting us all set up and, uh, and making the platform for you to join us. So um, uh, just want to uh, um, share that uh, this book came about um, over five years ago. Um, I have a personal connection to um, Annie and Herb and um, we had talked about doing a follow-up to Herb's uh, The Hollow Tree, and uh, we had started to work in that direction and unfortunately lost him. And uh, Annie and I got together and decided that uh, we were going to pursue this goal and make this book happen. And uh, Annie came to visit me in Sudbury and uh, sat down with a binder with blank paper in it and said, uh, write for 10 minutes a day until you've got something to work with. And she went off and, and wrote and worked with uh, mentors and editors and going through all the material that Herb had left behind for her and going through memories and, and also <coughs> grieving the loss of her late husband. And she shares that in this book. And um, very delighted to have um, Will Moran with us to have a conversation with Annie and Will, really, because uh, Will was a, a teacher and a student with her at University of Sudbury, um, Indigenous Studies professor at um, U of S. Um, he's uh, a father, a husband, a warrior, a veteran, uh, and a community arts activist. Um, those are just the, you know, the top ones. <laughs> There's many more. <laughs> Um, and and uh, very uh, appreciative uh, to have a ceremony before we started this um, event tonight. And um, it feels really special to me um, to be able to finally come to this point where we have a book and now we get to put it out into the world. In some ways, it's not ours anymore. It's, it's the world's. And um, um, we know Herb is behind this too, so... Um, I am going to just share that the book is available from your favorite bookseller. Uh, you can go in and order it if they don't have copies there. It's $21 um, and even less in the United States. <laughs> so uh, do go out and uh, get yourself a copy um, and, and know this story because there's just so much good medicine in this book. And I'm going to hand it over to Will to introduce Annie and get this conversation going. Awesome. Thank you, miigwech, Heather. And I am humbled and honored to be here as well, too, with my friend Annie. As I introduce um, in this uh, uh, format is, is one thing, but to honor the spirit of, of uh, much of the content in the book, uh, I will do so in, in Ojibwe. So, Annie Bojo, Will Morn and Dishnikoski, Wed Norman knows what Mayingan does, Mayingan Dorum, Mitch Pagwadarang Donjaba. Um, in, in Ojibwe, I introduced my, uh, my, uh, my spirit name and the community that I come from um, and, and the clan as well, too. But in there, I also uh, included my income tax name. Um, if if uh, you have a, a name and a birth certificate, you have an income tax name. So, uh, <clears throat> so that was um, part of that introduction. And that's one of the things that I really enjoyed with... Uh, with the journey that we have in the story um, of, of uh, Annie's book, as I as I introduce her in the same manner that I honor her late husband uh, Herb Ba, and in, our, in in Ojibwe in the Anishinaabe tradition, when we say Ba, it's uh, it's we add it to the end of the person's name, they who has passed on. But what that word also means is sleep. So Naba is, is uh, where I sleep. And when we sleep, we can go and visit with them because they are in the land of the sleep among the spirits. And so I, I, I honor my friend um, as, uh, as I do an introduction of uh, uh, his wife, Annie. So Annie is um, a PhD, a FUD, I mean a, a PhD <laughs> um, 
and, and she's a retired therapist and social worker. Uh, she was born in the mountains, and, and that is not just uh, any kind of mountains. It's the mountains of the Osage people, the uh, uh, northeastern part of the uh, uh, Arkansas, right? North, north, cent north central Arkansas. And uh, the oldest child of Mennonite missionary, uh, medical missionaries and uh, spent most of her childhood uh, in um, the Mennonite community of Lancaster, Pennsylvania. So that's got some deep um, uh, spiritual rooting elements in that. And, <clears throat> and so between the beginning of, of her story and the, the, the current situation is where I see, she says she's traveled across many territories. And, and I like that she uses that term territory because of, of that in itself is an acknowledgement that uh, much of Canada, United States is unaware that they're on someone else's home, someone else's land and territory. So <clears throat> the borders and the boundaries, uh, always learning. That's what one of the things that I appreciate with, with Annie because we, we studied, we started our PhDs together. And uh, so we're both uh, Elmer Fudd's uh, search and rabbit. Um, and, and, uh, um, always finding the light in everything that she's done. She's, she's, she has a dual citizenship from the Canada and the United States. And the word for the United States, I don't know if Herb has shared the, Herb has said that, the word for U.S. is um, um, Chimokamon King. Chimokamon means big knife. And, and King is the location of the land. And so she comes from the land of the big knives. And that's the, the cavalry, the military American cavalry <clears throat> and the big swords that the officers wore. And, and uh, so she honors her family um, on all sides of the borders, both south and north here. And she currently resides in Sault Ste. Marie, which is a uh, Mawak King is another place um, that uh, she and I have a connection because that's where I was born. So I, I was really excited in reading this book and, and, and having the opportunity to introduce Annie. But it was the, the, the powerful connection uh, on a personal level, both Annie and her Ba officiated the wedding for my wife and I. And, and, and it has a, a deep found um, importance every day for me in so far as that, that continued relationship. So I honor my friend, and I honor my friend Annie here in, in being help uh, in this process with uh, Letters of 46 to, to be able to celebrate this book, to celebrate Annie and her ba, as well as the teachings and, and the learning and the sharing. So, so there we go. Annie. Thank you. Cheers. <laughs> So as we uh, move through uh, the book and the discussion that we're going to have, and I, and I welcome and I thank anyone that's um, um, here to take the time to, when reading this book, recognizing that when, when I was reading it, uh, I, I kept getting carried away because of the, the, the journey that I've had with, with Herba and, and with Annie and, 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 and as well as with the teachings that she d divulges, as well as her personal reflections of her own journey. I, I get carried away. I, I, I had to read a bit and, I, and, and suddenly I found myself drifting off in my own thoughts, and my own memories and such. And that's what was powerful about and, and enjoyable about the book itself was the journeys that it will take you on and thinking that it will inspire in you. So um, um, I, I want to jump right into uh, talking about it and inviting you to uh, the first section of the book near the beginning of the book um, in about her own personal journey. and. and one of my first lines was when she was very young, she, she ran off along a river and when they found her um, on, on the birth of her, her, her younger sibling, <laughs> they found her naked running along the shore. So it, that, that, that I, I had to try to keep that image out of my mind. But um, on page um, six, where it starts as, uh, by the time I was in my late twenties. So if you could read that to um, near the end of page seven. I kind, of, kind of just to help the listeners, the viewers, um, to get a better picture of some of where you were, what you did, and, and how you got to this point um, um, as we move into the journey. So take it away. Thank you. Yeah. It has been a journey. So I'm reading here. By the time I was in my late 20s, I was married to my college sweetheart living in Toledo, Ohio, where he was completing medical training, and I was completing a Master of Social Work degree at the University of Michigan, an hour's drive from our Toledo apartment. No one who knew me in that world comprehended where I had come from, how far I had stretched to arrive in the career of a young professional married to a doctor, preparing to enter a realm of privilege from a formerly marginal existence. I longed to be accepted in the mainstream and all my strivings focused on that direction. 
There were many ways to hide there, but I had only a small frame of reference to decorate and twist into a semblance of solid validity. Keeping my oaky Mennonite heritage as secret as possible seemed a necessary step for my new life as a doctor's wife. And for many years, I hid my origins and much of my life from most people who knew me. Living a far distance from my family helped. The many manifestations of that internal split took its toll on my sense of self, my identity, my relationships, and my ability to be a whole person. It took until my marriage to Herb for me to fully integrate myself, embrace my identity, and begin to heal some of the cultural and historical wounds I carried. And that, that section really inspired me to, to recognize, I think that's what was one of the unifying factors between you and Herba, is how there was a, like a kindred spirit. You, you, you relate to people that have had an experience. And, and knowing um, those, uh, those of us that are artists have a, a sense of empathy uh, as, a, as, a, as a survival tool. And, and that sense of being able to appreciate other people. And there was this uh, instant kind of nonverbal, I get it, I get it. And, and Herba definitely saw that as he saw you in ceremony and, and recognizing, okay, yeah, we all carry wounds. And when you see other people carrying wounds, carrying um, um, self-oppression, self-sabotaging, um, self-denial, um, there's a sense of, you know what, let's celebrate together. And, and that, that's, that's why I wanted that quote that, that section to be read to begin your journey. What are your thoughts on that? Well, my, my first contact with Herb occurred in a ceremonial setting at the home of a mutual friend of ours. And in, uh, in the conclusion of the ceremony, one of the things that he said to me after our sharing time was, Annie, sometimes you have to give up what you don't want <laughs> in order to get what you do. Absolutely. And, it, and it's, it's, it's those, those solid messages that are truth. It's a truth in itself. Absolutely. Absolutely. And he saw that immediately. He saw that I needed to let go of some, yeah. some things, some pride. Yeah. Any tree yeah. that doesn't let go is yeah. dead. Yeah. Any tree that doesn't let go of the leaves, it's not prepared for the next change to come. Mm -hmm. and, and that's it. Well, it was a shocking thing for me to hear. Yeah. You have to give things up. <laughs> and y until you do that. You, yeah. you won't receive what it is that you want. Yeah. Another great uh, philosopher that I admire is Bruce Lee, and he speaks about a cup. You can't put any in if it's full, so you gotta empty out some yeah. before you can put new stuff in. Yeah. And, and that's a universal teaching, and I think that's one of the things that I appreciate. Of the many elders <laughs> that I've um, um, had been privileged to listen to, a lot of it is, is in order for me to hear them, I have to let go of some of those old thinkings, those old mm -hmm. ways, those controlled ways of, of wanting to hold on to things. And, and as soon as you let go of that, suddenly there's clarity. And, and, and the echoed message is indigenous knowledge is human knowledge. So indigenous teachings are human teachings. Mm -hmm. And it was that echoing of that message. Is, is, it was a universal indica it was indication to you. A meeting of the heart. And yeah. I think you know, one of the things that I've continued to learn about is um, that process mm -hmm. of letting go and that is a process of being willing mm -hmm. rather than willful. Yes. When we are full of our own will, yeah. uh, there's not much room for creator to do creator spirit work. Exactly. And that process of being willing is a lifelong journey. Exactly. Just like the word awful. Yeah. We're full of awe, but we may ourselves feel, oh, that's a bad thing when it's awful. When it's, no, you're full of awe and mm -hmm. that is that journey you're on, is that when you become full of awe, that's enabling mm -hmm. you to let go because there's so much more beauty in that new, mm -hmm. that, that in, insightful or that clarity in mm -hmm. what it is that you're being, being introduced to. So mm -hmm. that's awesome. Okay, my, my next uh, section that I, I want you to read um, is uh, near page 36, 37, um, and uh, where it starts, about a week after meeting her. So now, now we're getting something. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, you really go for the good stuff. <laughs> All right. About a week after meeting Herb, he asked me to marry him. I went to my friend Miriam and shared. I now know where I'm going. I know what I'm going to be doing and why I had those feelings last month of going far away. I'm moving to Ontario and getting married. Miriam and our little circle of work friends enthusiastically rallied around me 
and became my best supporters and helpers over the next seven months of transitioning out of my job, out of my apartment, out of my country, and into a whole new way of life. They and many more of my friends and family from far distances all traveled to the wedding ceremony near Sudbury, Ontario on July 15, 2006, participating in the sweat lodge ceremonies before the wedding and sharing their love for me in a myriad of supportive ways. Their happiness and my happiness helped launch me into my new life. I miss Miriam. She died four years later of cancer. And while it was hard to accept this loss, she remains in my memory as a special part of my life in a special moment in time. My new life with Herb Navigon was the fulfillment of a vision both of us held in our hearts. We both wanted so very much to have a partner in life with whom we could share a sane and healthy relationship free of conflict, drama, and the effects of mental illness or alcoholism. Herb's vision was that his life could serve as an example of how one could recover from alcoholism with healing brought about through ancient Anishinaabeg spiritual traditions to have a partner to share all that had been a hope and a vision of his for a long time. Beautiful. And I think that's the, that's the, the, the point that I wanted to make with that as an introduction for you to share in that, that um, two world reality, that you're coming from one world and, 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 and being welcomed into another world, um, knowing where you've come from and knowing um, a, a bit about where you're going into, that you weren't doing it alone. And, and, I, and I really appreciated that sense of, of finding someone that you can walk with. Mm -hmm. And as, as both uh, you and Herpa had been there um, in, in uh, officiating the, the, the traditional wedding service for my wife and I, that was one of the things. I married late as well and um, started a family late because it was, it was taking the time to find that person, to find that person that I can walk with. And I didn't have to explain or qualify or I didn't have to justify or explain myself because she got it. She understood it. And, and so, you know, at, uh, as we had breakfast together with Heather this morning, we spoke about some of those elements and some of those coincidences and the one of the coincidences that I spoke about my, at my wedding was about how a little dragonfly landed on my hand during the service at sunrise. And this dragonfly hopped off my finger onto my wife's finger and fluttered around the ceremony. And it's how those, those um, little spirits or those little uh, incidences or those little examples, could you give me another one that kind of either is in the book or that kind of you reflect on about that new journey into that life that you walked with her? One of the things that Herb and I did after that wedding ceremony near Burwash, <laughs> out in the bush, uh, we went on a, a month-long journey visiting all the relatives. And we went to see my family in the U.S. We went to two family reunions. And at one of those family reunions, his sister um, semi-formally adopted me into the family under the protection of the Loon clan and gave me instructions on what that meant and um, she told me, Annie, if you ever remarry, if Herb dies and you ever remarry, you're not allowed to marry anyone from the Loon Clan. <laughs> so um, I, I didn't realize at that time how much being welcomed into that family would actually assist me to have healing in my own family. Exactly, because it echoes that the Loon Clan, the clan yeah. system in, in Anishinaabeg teachings is another family. Mm -hmm. And in the same manner that I can go to the Mohawk territory or, or to the Cree territory. And, and when I encounter other people from other clans, mm -hmm. um, when I meet someone that is of, of wolf clan, they are my clan brother and mm -hmm. sister. And that's the beauty of those teachings. And, and that's the process we're in. So I celebrate that when, when you mention that, when he mentions that in there about the, the loon, and I think I, that was mm -hmm. another one of the sections I mentioned was, that I picked was about the loon. How... Um, and I don't know if you, you, you were uh, sh uh, taught this or explained this, but in the Ojibwe uh, tradition, we have constellations mm -hmm, yes. that we name as well, too. Yes, I Do you know which, I, one, which one is the Loon Clan? The, the, the Big Dipper. No, the Little Dipper. The Little Dipper. The Little okay, Dipper. The Little, the little Dipper, Dipper yeah. is the Loon, the Mung. Yeah. And the, the, um, uh, the North Star is in the tail of the Mung. And yeah. so you're never lost. Because yeah. if you can find the North Star, yeah. you can always find your clan. And the Loon Clan means also that you have responsibilities yeah. within the community. Yeah, absolutely. It is your job 
to do all of that that you need to do to kind of keep relationships going well in the community. Yes, yes, because they're, they're, as, as uh, uh, Herb Baugh had demonstrated, mm -hmm. both at the University of Sudbury in the social work program and within the indigenous community <coughs> within uh, Sudbury area, there, there was, he was a leader, and that's what the clan mm -hmm. is. It's a leadership clan, but it, it's, the, it's the, the role that the clan represents is its internal governance. It's mm -hmm. within the family, within the community, mm -hmm. not this outreach, but close to home and keeping it grounded. So, so that I really appreciate. And also another responsibility as it was explained to me was that you support the, um, the clan, the, the Crane clan, the chief yes. clan. Yes, yes. You, you help them because they have big responsibility to relate to the outside community. Yes, it's not just about you, it's about exactly. we. And that's that's a lot of what what definitely I, I appreciated from from her boss. So um, to jump into the text, I, I ended up I was asked to pick three sections, but I picked four. So I want to jump into my second of four or my third of four. Is it my third? My third section already. Eh? Wow. Okay. So um, page eighty four. Eighty four. Okay. Um, and 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 this is where um, I wanted you to to, to kind of I. I, I it kind of goes to the end of the, the chapter, maybe not 84, 85, where uh, Herb's um, response showed me just how privileged uh, my little uh, complaints were. So, so right at the top, right up, right up here. Okay. Um, if you want to back up a bit. I, I need to back up a little yeah, bit so to put it in context. Or, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll say that, you know, Herb had really pushed against some things at Laurentia University while he was there, and then the incident with with my experience there and yes. he really struggled in the initial months following my terminated defense at one point when i was telling him how frustrated i felt about the experience i said i didn't sign up for this <laughs> herb's response showed me just how privileged my little complaints were yes. i didn't sign up for this either none of us did he exclaimed <laughs> when he said that i realized he was speaking about everything that the First Nations peoples have experienced because of the direct oppression of their knowledge, their ways of knowing, their way of life in the natural world, colonization is still alive. And the structural systemic racism embedded in government, social life, economics, and education continues to drive ongoing genocidal forces and the very destruction of the earth herself. So many people still resist this understanding. My experience was an important lesson in teaching me the realities that indigenous peoples face every day of their lives. I lived this reality in Loving Herb, his family and his community, and I can never think of my life in the same way as I did before. It's as if my indigenous husband handed me his glasses to put on and look into new realities around me, and I see through the lens of what he knew and felt and experienced, but not through his eyes, through my own, with a different viewfinder attached. It has changed me and my way of understanding. I have different ways of learning and knowing now. I'm not indigenous to this continent. I cannot feel what he felt, but I was his wife, his companion, his love. I am a friend, an ally with my own work of decolonization, on this continent to pick up and carry. <laughs> I have a lot of work to do to learn to be a treaty person. My own indigenous spirit, one of European indigenous background, is being restored simultaneously with all the responsibilities that this knowledge carries. Beautiful, because of, of <clears throat> that core message is that each of us have those indigenous roots, but at the same time, um, because we are not in France, we're not in Germany, we're not in Africa or Asia, we are on, on land that is, is continually being taken over and the people that are here are continually not being heard. They're mm -hmm. not being listened to because we are not calm enough, we're not um, um, aware enough of our own journey, our own struggles, our own traumas that are preventing us from being able to hear others. And, and that's, that's key, that's key. I heard Wes Cynthia Wesley Esquimalt once described <clears throat> this as people who are wounded are often living out their lives as if the hammer had just struck yes. and they're 
jumping around, holding on to the wounded thumb, screaming and crying and not letting go and not letting it heal. Yes. And I think that in some ways that is, the Europeans are, are, are people of trauma. Yep. There has never been a, a year mm -hmm. on the European continent where some war has not been happening. There's exactly. always been fighting. Exactly. And um, so I think about that and I think about the responsibilities we have yep. to just feel the feels yeah. and acknowledge the traumas yeah. and stay in our own space, talk our own truth. Yes. And uh, anyway. The, the, the power, that. one of the things is, as you said, in, in defining the struggle you and mm -hmm. Herba had mm -hmm. during your PhD mm -hmm. <clears throat> and, and the, the struggle he had as a professor at the university. And, and the thing is, is that uh, like him and others that I, I refer to as my mentors going um, 20 years, 20 plus years <clears throat> teaching at the university, that um, I stand on their shoulders and that they got us farther than we had been before. Mm -hmm. And that my, my way of honoring them is to take mm -hmm. that message mm -hmm. and those teachings mm -hmm. a little farther as well. And, and I see the, the role that those that get it, like yourself and other allies, that when they begin to get it, it's, it's now the, the, the responsibility to tell others who they are listened mm -hmm. by. So mm -hmm. in that sense is how do you get uh, a man to tell, uh, or, or, or how do you get a man to listen to a woman? Is you get another man to tell him. How do you get a woman to listen to a man? You get another woman to listen, to tell her. It's, you need to find one of your own that is communicating that message, but also modeling mm -hmm. those instructions, those teachings modeling that and and and, and her bob presented a model for which i reflect on regularly mm -hmm. on how to endure those challenges endure those struggles and you speak about that in, in in the center part of the book that we are at right now is 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 talking about um teachings of of uh, um the medicine wheel and, mm -hmm. and and the earth and the turtle and and the challenges that um we all have we can find solutions if we just look outside our, our world of seeing and see that other cultures may have answers or solutions or perspectives as you shift yours. Mm -hmm. So what is unique, before I pick my last section in the, in, in the book, um, what has shifted in your perspective? Shifted in time? Shifted in time, in, time. in perception, mm -hmm. in understanding, in, in um, uh, identity. What has shifted since okay. your, your, your time and journey with Herba? So 16 years ago when I emigrated to Canada, I did not emigrate to Canada. I emigrated to Anishinaabe territory. <laughs> and I, I did not fully understand that at the time. I gradually became aware of the reality of that. And um, in my journey now, I understand mm, for whatever reason, Creator has created a path for me where I go back and forth across boundaries. I learn how to deal with the realities in borderlands. I learn how to um, responsibly be willing to accept a role of disruptor of sorts. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I now have some of the things that I need in order to be able to speak to the people I come from. And as I've been willing to let this go into the world, those are their opportunities for me to speak to other people are coming to me. Mm -hmm. and, and that's a little bit scary because uh, I have no idea where that path leads. <laughs> I, I have no idea what will be asked of me. And that's okay because in the years before I met Herb, I was already putting out my intention, creator, whatever, whatever you want me to do, I'm ready. I'm here. I'm that's ready to awesome. do that. So that, that shifting in perspective, I like your use of the word border border yeah. the border lines or those border lands, spaces yeah. and lands because as a person of mixed ancestry i realize that mm -hmm. i'm not native enough for some people i'm too native for others i'm mm -hmm. not white enough for some or i'm too white mm -hmm. in, in as an academic and and so i journey through that struggle because it doesn't matter how many degrees you have if the people don't want to hear what you have to say it doesn't matter if it's truth if they're yeah. not ready to hear it and so that's the challenge so as as i mentioned uh, we began our PhD together. That would be degree number five for me. Mm -hmm. But I, 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 I'm still working on it, but I'm not sure I want to complete it because I didn't want Laurentian to give me the fifth degree. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
<laughs> they will. <laughs> and, and so I'm, I'm considering going to another institution, mm -hmm. transfer and, and, and complete it there for the purposes of, of I'm tired of, of standing on those lands and, and, and speaking and not being heard. And, and that's, that's kind of what I saw um, mm -hmm. the, the journey that Herb had, Herb Ba had in um, much of the work that he had done. And, and one of the reasons why later on he, he had decided, okay, he's done. I'm done. Yeah. He's done. Because if the systems are not prepared to hear, they're not prepared to heal. Yeah. And so bringing me to the, the last section that I wanted to focus on um, is uh, page 58 as you're, as you're um, um, at the end of a, a, a quoted uh, from one of your sourced uh, supports um, and on 158 where you uh, talk about the journey from wonderedness. <coughs> Woundedness. Woundedness, yeah, yeah. I'm dyslexic. So I have dyslexia. Okay. <laughs> That's all right. Because <laughs> it is a wonder for me. When you're wounded, it's, a, it's an opportunity. If <clears throat> you're on a path of healing, when you're wounded, yeah. there's a consciousness of repair. And I think one of the things that we now know about woundedness in general and trauma specifically is that we have natural ways of healing. The white world is learning that now. Yes. The Anishinaabe yes. peoples, the indigenous peoples have known this since time immemorial. Exactly. And have Just known like, how to do I'm it. I'm wounded. I'm wounded. Mm -hmm. oh, that's yeah. a good thing. That's an adventure as opposed to a barrier. Yeah. Yeah. Take it away, girl. The journey from woundedness and despair to living in the light of healing took Herb the larger part of his life to traverse. By the time he was 39 years old, it was clear he would not live very long if he kept doing what he was doing, and only through the Creator's true miracle of purification and restoration was he able to go on to the life he needed. Before embracing this journey, he disdained the tree huggers and Hollywood Indians and was too filled with bitterness to understand the indigenous connection to spirit and nature that he had experienced in childhood. He was angry all the time, and especially at white people. As he said one time, I did not know what my name, Amongis, meant. It took him a long time to understand all the meaning carried in his spirit name, the name his Nokomis gave him. Herb was fortunate enough in childhood to have had a father who spent time with him and talked to him about things of importance, such as the teachings of the Loon clan, which was the patrilineal clan of his ancestors. Countless times I heard Herb repeat the story of the time he sat with his father outside their cabin and watched a priest walk by. His family respected that priest, yet his father told him in no uncertain terms not to follow him. He said, the loon takes care of the family and finds food for them. The loon will never harm the young or rape the children or misuse or abuse anyone. Don't follow the priest, he will lead you astray. Herb often used this teaching in his talks with people as it made quite an impression on him as a young boy. He had seen the parent loons with the young, how attached the family groups were and how loyal. His identification with the loon clan was restored to him in the years after beginning work with the elders. He respected the clan teachings and always sought to learn more. He began to understand the people he used to refer to as tree huggers. <laughs> he deepened his feelings about nature and developed a longing to see the earth be healed from the ravages of modern civilization. Herb hated to see what was happening with all the environmental destruction on the planet, the poisoning of the water and air, the destructions the mine left in their wake, often with water being irreparably contaminated even deeper into the water table he often wondered what was going to happen in the generations to come. So the, 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 the warning that he was given by his father is, is something that is very profound, specifically because when we do this, uh, as we, we are recording this and going live and doing this view, this, this, uh, this sharing, just a couple of days ago the, in the Vatican, Vatican City, the Pope had made an apology. And of the many delegations that were there, there are many that were residential school survivors. And that legacy that is, that is what we would say is our shared history in Canada, our past that Canada has. But for Indigenous peoples, we don't have a past. We don't have a history. We have a now. 
because of that reality is still within us. And, mm -hmm. and even just my own personal journey and, 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 and echoing uh, the journey that Herpa had of um, uh, my, my sister, uh, when I was 14, was taken from us. And, and uh, my wife, the same with her sister, her younger sister was taken. And so it was one of those things that, you know, you, you begin to understand um, uh, when, when empathy becomes your tool and how you learn more about another people, you become more empathetic, whether it be um, um, a friend, whether it be another culture or another people's history. It's that understanding of empathy and then understanding the journey. And if you talk specifically um, about some of Herb's journey in the loss of his arm. Yeah. What do you want me to say? Well, I have a little anecdote. I just wanted to kind of play a little thing. What arm was it that he lost? He lost his right arm. And the first evening that I met her, we had to walk from the ceremonial grounds back to the house of our friend in the pitch dark. And he <laughs> asked me, he said, Annie, I, I only have one arm. Will, will you be my post? Can I hold on to your shoulder while we walk through the dark? And he would always say to me after that many times, you make a good post. <laughs> <laughs> well, the beauty too is, is the way the brain works, you know, the left, right hemispheres, mm -hmm. that the um, right brain controls the left side. Yeah. And so that means he was always in his right mind. Always. Always. <laughs> Except when I would have to tell him, <laughs> whatever happened to my Dalai Lama? You're cranky today. <laughs> yes, and, and, and he's human, and you're human, and yeah. I think that's one of the things. So um, I'm not sure how much longer um, the timing is, uh, 10 oh, minutes, right? Perfect. Good. So, so what I'd like to do is, is with that as a segue into mm -hmm. that personal journey, the day to day kind of, okay, yeah. Um, um, you, you need to, you know, take your shoes outside cause they stink <laughs> or whatever. So that journey you had together, there was all this wonderful, you know, uh, spiritual stuff and, and, you know, lots of really powerful cultural teachings. Um, what is one of the, the, the things that, other than, you know, that Dalai Lama kind of analogy. Yeah. What is it that, that kind of um, um, rubbed you the wrong way, but that you laugh at now? <laughs> From the very first year that I knew Herb, I was irritated by his sloppiness. <laughs> <laughs> and I was absolutely determined that I would subtly and carefully, without his knowing it, change that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I think I was successful except even after we moved into our new home in Pick River um, long time <laughs> six seven years after we got married uh, his propensity to leave socks and shoes <laughs> and jeans and who knows what else laying all over the place um, the Creator sent us a teacher uh, Herb decided that he wanted to take his cousin up on an offer to have a puppy. <laughs> and the puppy taught Herb, finally, <laughs> after 2012, six years of living together, the puppy came and taught Herb to put the shoes away, <laughs> put the socks in the laundry, put the glasses up and not let them lay on the table. That puppy went through four pairs of orthotic insoles, oh. Three remote controls, two <laughs> pairs of glasses, uncountable numbers of socks. <laughs> but Herb learned. That is awesome. Yeah, I, I definitely appreciate. There are a few yeah. times where I've had to uh, let Herb know that there's some some of his supper still in his beard. <laughs> but, well, you know, I you... learned that in order to be a Nabagon, yes. it was important to feed your shirt. Yes. Yes. Yes, especially yeah. uh, uh, when you get into shape, and round is a shape. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. If, if you know exactly. my, my visual, round is a shape. Um, and it becomes a, a, a resting place, not a post, but a place um, in, in that journey. Yeah. So I think that's one of the powerful <laughs> things. Um, but overall, I think as, as, a, as an educator of Indigenous knowledge and mm. teachings, one of the things that I really appreciated about the book was your recall and reflection and interpretation and that that's what's key here is is almost like a translation mm -hmm. of teachings that 
Herba and myself and many others that have that have talked and articulated from that perspective. Mm -hmm. And that's why I was asking you about perspective. But that that uniqueness that is in here is the core of the book carries mm -hmm. a lot of indigenous knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. But go ahead. And go ahead. and I, I think one of the things that I've recognized in my time in Canada is that uh, to to greater or lesser extent, we all have colonized brains. Yes. 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 And the journey to decolonize our minds is never finished. No. And it's a gift to Mother Earth if we are able to do that because the the long the long arm of colonization is extended around the planet and is slowly killing the life of the planet. So for me, this is my story. Yes. yes, I'm sharing the gifts that Herb shared with me, but I'm doing it in a respectful way. Yeah. I'm doing it in a way that says, um, I am on this journey. I'm, I'm, I'm asking others to also be willing yes. to engage in their own journey, yeah. whatever walk of life they come from, whatever direction they come from, um, to learn, to learn from the indigenous knowledge of the earth. His last name is? Nabigon. Nabigon, yeah. right? And in there, that word bi means water or what water does, mm -hmm. it moves. And we use that bi to describe things that are moving mm -hmm. and the way they move. So mm -hmm. when I say ja is the, the action to go, when I say bija, bijan, it means uh -huh. to come come this way or to fly around, uh, majiashe, bi majiashe is to fly around. Uh, when you're <clears> walking, <throat> masse, bi masse. Yeah. But the word for life is bimodzuin. Mm -hmm. And so that when we come into this world, baby is binoji. So we recognize even in his name, his last name being likely one of his ancestors' clans mm -hmm. or spirit names, mm -hmm. in that role that he played and the instructions that came with that name. Mm -hmm. And so now, just as a, a last point um, for sharing um, from, from your insight and your perspective and your experience, mm -hmm. is is that those instructions that came to him with his name, which is Mong Ens, which means little loon, mm -hmm. little loon. Mm -hmm. and, and that your instructions that you were, when you were gifted into the clan, as well as what do, you, what do you say as a takeaway would be your overall teaching, other than the things that you already shared, something that you could say is, um, in this moment, like tomorrow might be something different, but right now, what is, your, what is the teaching that you would say that you want to give to the listeners, the viewers, the readers of your book that, that it is as, as a gift? Well, what came to my mind while you were talking was just, um, just be yourself. Her would always say that to me, Annie, just be yourself. I would express concern to him. Um, <laughs> when, I, when he asked me to marry him and I said, you know, I have a feeling there's a lot of people who are not going to be happy with you for marrying a white woman. Uh, what are you going to say to them? And uh, using a bit cruder language than I will use, he basically said, I'll tell them to go mind their own business. <laughs> but, you know, he, he constantly called me to account, yeah. to pay attention to myself. And to just be what I was and be happy, he would. It, the, some of the last words that he left with me is, "Annie, I just want you to be happy." Yep. You know, yep. um, we have a responsibility to lift each other up, yep. and and keeping that positive uplift of those around us is as much what we do for ourselves as it is for those around us, and. Sometimes we're really going to need other people yeah. to do that for us. Yeah. And, and we're not going to do it perfectly. And it was never about perfection. He had no trouble being an imperfect person. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if he was late, if he forgot something, well, okay, hey, it happened. Yeah. Uh, but yet he, he did really try yeah. to do things in the right time. Yeah. And I know that I'm in the right time in my life. It was the right time for this to be released into the world the right time for me to move on it's the right time for me to just be myself absolutely because yeah. that's the core of our indigenous teachings is non-interference to not interfere yeah. so by yeah. asking someone and so for me my my <clears throat> uh, my closing thought is never ask someone when when they are telling you something don't question them with are you sure right yeah are you sure 
Because exactly. that's where we're at. That's where we need to be is, is accepting people have their own instructions. And that's what he's, mm -hmm. he's talking about. He has his instructions. And so whatever the people think, that's, that's what that, they don't yes. understand his instructions. Mm -hmm. And part of his instructions was to marry you. Yeah. Yeah. And this is and part of that. That this is, yeah. And this isn't the conclusion. No. You know, this is um, just my gift. Yes. It's my gift to the family, my gift to yes. the, the, the bigger family, my gift to myself to, to claim my own story in that context and to, to claim the growth and the healing that comes with, um, the, you know, people think that you get over grief yes. and you don't really. It's that the world around that grief begins to get bigger and bigger so the grief seems smaller and smaller. Absolutely. Yeah. That's awesome. So enough light for the next steps. And without that, we're not going very far. <laughs> and, uh, but the thing is, is you gotta make that step. You gotta take that step. So there's enough light to see for the next step. So thank you, Annie, oh, it was a wonderful Thank you so joy. much. Thank you for allowing yeah. 46 to, to, to do what they're doing. Yes. Um, Heather, take it away, girl. Gee, Rich. I, I could listen to you guys for a long time, but I listened to you this morning, so um, there's, I mean, I just, I'm sitting there going, oh, I'm so glad we published this book. There's just so much in here, and I really hope that, that Annie, you get to, to speak about it on your journeys as you continue. Mm -hmm. um, I did want to open up if anybody had any questions, so if those who are online, um, <coughs> can they go into the chat and ask a question? Yes. Well, and I always say, you can ask me any question you want to. Um, it's my decision how I answer that. Yeah. <laughs> you might not like the answer. <laughs> Does anybody here have a question? Thank you for being here. The word uh, miigwech has the word miigweh in it, and, and it means gift. Mm -hmm. So when you say <clears throat> miigwech, you acknowledge the gifts that are being exchanged. So, uh, You know, you did ask me something about uh, what I'm left with. I, another thing that I carry with me now is a deep understanding of reciprocity. Yeah. Everything that you ask for, there will be something that you are required to give. And if you cannot do that intentionally, the creator will find a way to show you. <laughs> In a little <laughs> puppy. <laughs> uh, a puppy. I, I asked to know when I should take off my wedding ring. And four years later, at a sun dance, I was given an instruction. Take off those shiny things. You should have known better. <laughs> you don't come to this and wear your shiny things. And so I took it off and I n I've never put it back on Cause again because I don't, I, you know. And when I got back to my room, mm -hmm. I discovered that my earring had gone oh. as well. So oh. something that I had prayed for and asked for, an answer was given there and something was gifted. Yeah. That's how the universe yep. works. Yep. Energy's never lost. It's yeah. just into one into another forever, life into life forever. Exactly. And, and life wants to live, love wants to love. Yeah. I want to live, I'm moving on, you know. Awesome. And, but I, I'm, just, I'm so grateful I was able to uh, write the book and so grateful that Heather was able to publish it and so excited to see its journey begin. Absolutely. So Rob, do we have any questions from uh, the, uh, the, the netherworld? <clears throat> Okay, <laughs> that's wonderful. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. So uh, if, if you can't see it on my camera, on this camera, enough light for the next step, and, and that's the starting point. That's the journey that we're on, is taking that step. And, and sometimes it might not be a comfortable step. Uh, it's more than likely will be uncomfortable, but then if it's uncomfortable, it means you're in the right direction. You're doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. If it's not comfortable, you're self-gratifying. Uh, um, so it has to be uncomfortable. That means you're moving into new territory and that means that's new learning So don't be afraid to take the next step and it doesn't mean that you're not going to be afraid No, I you know You have to have that courage to face your foe with integrity mm -hmm. as Herb used to say. Yes. Yeah. Yes very much so So there we go. Thank you much. Thank, Thank you. you. Rick. Thank you Yeah, we say Bama Peak Wabman, which is uh, I will uh, um, uh, sleep and then I will come back and and during that sleep I will have dreams and some of them might be with my ancestors or my friends who have passed on mm -hmm. and we'll have stories to share 
So, we good? All right. Rock and roll. <laughs> High five again. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh my